A former presidential candidate and a Republican congressman from Texas, Ron Paul has some serious opinions about the economy and just how it should be handled. He even says we're doing just what Osama bin Laden wanted us to do. Let's bring him in to talk about that. Congressman, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. All right, well, let's just address that off the bat. We are handling our economy like Osama bin Laden would like us to? Yes, he actually said it, that he would like to drag us into a war in the Middle East. He was pleasantly surprised that we did as much as we did after 9-11, because his plan is to bog us down and bankrupt our country and uh, diminish our morale. And he's doing exactly the same thing, because we were his ally when he used the same strategy against the Soviets. So uh, this is not strange, or, or uh, we should easily understand it, and he's doing a very good job. We are bankrupt and uh, he's participating in it and laughing at us. You know, but whether uh, you are in favor or not in favor of big government, one thing is certain, uh, this country is bleeding jobs on Monday, more than 70,000 job cuts announced, more than 200,000 job cuts announced so far this year alone in just the past couple of weeks. And pretty much uh, everyone would argue you've got to spend to create jobs. So there really is a divide there. Are you proposing that we not spend in order to create jobs? Well, the uh, private sector should spend the money. What you're saying, the problems are getting worse, and we've been spending a whole year spending and inflating and doing everything, so it's getting worse. So that's pretty good evidence that it's not a good idea. Sure, you need more spending, but you need the private spe sector to spend it. When the government spends it, they take the money from a productive area of the economy, and they put it in the non-productive areas. Congressman, the private sector doesn't have the money to spend right now. Well, Oh, no, I don't think that's exactly right. There's a lot of money there. There's a lot of, a lot of cash out there. How much money do you think is in the bond market? There's a bubble in the bond market. And, and if, they, if they knew assets were properly priced, see, the government got involved and artificially raised the price of these uh, uh, illiquid assets. And uh, that's why that first $350 billion failed. So you want the market to price all these uh, assets. And, and somebody's going to come in. That's why you have to have bankruptcy and liquidation the debt. You need to get rid of the mistakes. The faster you do that, the better it is for us. And all we're doing is prolonging the agony and we're treating the symptoms rather than the cause. It, it sounds like you're calling for a more laissez-faire approach, a more hands-off approach by the government. But I have to say that most people argued that the way we got into this was through too much deregulation, not enough uh, oversight when you look at Fannie and Freddie, for example. But you're suggesting essentially the same thing continue when, when it didn't work? Uh, well, most of the people do say that, that uh, laissez-faire got us into this, but the, most of those people are wrong because we haven't had laissez-faire. It's been a long, long time. We have interventionism. We have corporatism. We have subsidies to corporation. We have over-regulation, over-taxation. We have a financial system based on a fiat dollar standard that creates the bubble. We are so far and have been so far from capitalism, it's unbelievable. When, when we had a crisis uh, with Enron, what did we do? Uh, we passed Sarbanes-Oxley, and that was by the conservatives. So to say that this had something to do with the failure of capitalism. I don't buy into that. I think it's completely wrong and we have to refute that idea. Let's focus on solutions, Congressman. What would you do uh, if you're President Obama and his economic team? We have a new Treasury Secretary, Timothy Geithner, confirmed on Monday night. What should be the, the first, the one, two, three, that they really need to do to tackle this economy? I would say uh, change our foreign policy so that we can bring our troops home, save hundreds of billions of dollars, get back to where the budget is in order, and then lower taxes dramatically. So, so pulling that, out of Iraq is going to solve our economic uh, crisis oh, right now? Well, it helped get us into it. All empires end with overextension of their military powers around the world, just as the Soviets failed. That is why we're failing, and that, of course, is why uh, bin Laden likes us to be over there. Yes, you have to change that. You can't do it continuously. So what we want to do is restore confidence, but right now there is no confidence because we're doing exactly the same thing. When we get into trouble, we add regulations, we add spending, we add borrowing, we add inflation all the things that gave us our problems to begin with. So you can't solve the problems with doing the same thing over and over again. We have to believe in ourselves. We have to believe in freedom. We have to believe in sound money. Mm -hmm. We have to believe, once again, we don't even need a Federal Reserve system and we don't need an income tax. Believe me, that would restore confidence. Just think if tomorrow everybody knew they didn't have to pay income tax anymore. Do you think they would go back to spending? They would have so much more money to spend, but you can't do that unless you cut this wasteful government spending. 
Government spends money only by taking it from productive resources. All right, let's end on this quickly, Congressman. If you were asked to vote on that $825 billion stimulus package, what column would you be in, yay or nay? <laughs> that, that would be an easy one. I wouldn't be able to vote for that kind of money. I think I could have uh, guessed that one. <laughs> Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you.